are at Wylands Angling Centre for our bagging on the pole. And this is a, a beautiful fishery here. It's, it's this, this actual particular lake is for match anglers, nicknamed the snake, because it's a canal, canalised version of a, of a lake. But there's also several other lakes. It's a beautiful complex. And it's one of the, the many sort of managed fisheries which seem to be coming to the fore nowadays. It's a beautiful July morning and I think we're going to catch plenty of fish. I've already tackled up. Because it's bagging on the pole, I'm using, through the tip, a number 10 elastic. It's a thick elastic, there, and it's through these, all these three sections. It runs the whole length of the pole, number 10 elastic, so it's thick elastic. The main line is number 12, high power. I've got a very, very which is a, something like four pound, I've got a very, very small float here, just a carbon stem, a little tiny float. It actually, the loading capacity is three number sevens, which is transformed into shot terms. It's two number 11 shot, two very, very small shot. And then a hook length of 010 diameter, which is about two and a half pounds. And then a, a number 18 hook, barbless hook, it's always better to use barbless hooks for carp anyway. Um, you tend not to tear out the fish as easily. As they're twisting backwards and forwards, a, a barbed hook wears a hole in the fish. And on most carp fisheries, uh, it's barbless hooks anyway. So there's the rig, and it's very, you can see the depth, I know the depth across on the far bank, which is, a, this, this water's about 11 metres wide. The depth is something like, probably, seven inches right against the far bank and I've just set this over depth, a little bit over depth, something like 18 inches deep. So that's the first, that's the rig that I hope to catch on today. I'm going to fish tight against the far bank. It's 11 metres wide here so I'm going to fish tight against the far bank. That's the one I hope to catch all the fish with. I've also set another one up for fishing a little bit away from the far bank where it's slightly deeper water. While I'm feeding today I know some of the loose feed will be coming this side of, 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 the, of the shallow water. And I've set another rig up just to compensate for this. The fish may be there, you can never tell. So I've set another rig up, very similar, very similar rig, except the elastic this time, still through the whole three sections of the pole. But the elastic is number eight elastic, slightly smaller elastic, ston flow attachment, the line itself again is a number 12 high power, which is something like three pound. The float slightly larger, it's the same type of float with a little carbon stem, small cane bristle, and it's a four number 10s. The other one was four seven, so just a slightly heavier float because we're fishing in a little bit deeper water. The depth of that, I've set that at, is about three foot. I'll check it in a minute, I'll plumb it up. And on there, I've just got four number 
11 shot. This actual, when a float says four number tens, it actually indicates the style lead size number. So if you're using style leads, that would take four number tens, which is in fact equivalent to four number 11 shot. So they're equally spaced on the line. There's one just above the hook length. The hook length is something like nine inches long. And there's a shot above and then they're equally spaced, just to give me a slow fall through the water. So that's two rigs. It's fair, I've kept it fairly simple, but nice thick elastic through three sections. Uh, the carp here run up to about three pounds, but generally they're a pound, roughly at average about a pound. So that should be enough to cope. If we start to catch more fish, I can always increase the size of elastic and even the size of line. Now I need to introduce some ground bait onto that or close to that far bank. It's only sort of seven or eight inches deep there. So if, you, if I was to throw balls in there, it would disturb them. So what I'm going to do is use this pole cup here to transport the small balls of ground bait across to the far bank. The ground bait itself I've already mixed up. It's just super cup, mixed fairly, fairly moist. I don't, it doesn't need to be hard. It's in a cup and it's only going seven inches deep. I've also put some casters in the ground bait as well. Just something to concentrate these fish, particularly the bigger fish. It's very, very easy. It's quite damp, so you can make up a, a nice ball. Like that. Drop it into the cup. You have to be careful because the cup can spin over, but it's a nice round ball of ground bait. We're going to transport that to the far bank, which is 11 metres away, with perfect accuracy. The ship on our joint. Be careful. Make sure that you watch the cup all the way to keep it level. If that tips over one way or the other, then of course you'll lose your ball of ground bait. And like all sorts and all types of fishing, Pick a far bank marker so that you're feeding in the same place all the time. You don't drift off it during the day. I can get right tight across that far bank, that's where the fish are, and just drop this little ball of ground bait, look at that, perfect accuracy, plonk, right exactly where you want it. I'm going to put about three in there, initial feed. Hasn't disturbed the fish at all, it's just plopped in nice and quietly, but it will concentrate them. So we'll same again, so I'm going to put three balls in there. It's a lovely way to fish this, perfectly accurate. Sometimes it can be time consuming, but it's worth it. It's worth that little bit of extra time to get the accuracy that you require. And of course, the noise factor, so that you don't disturb the fish. What I'm hoping to do is put these three balls in and then loose feed maggots over the top. And then during the day, we can top up with this every now and again when we think it needs it. Right across, tight again, that far bank. Look at that, lovely. Just one more and that'll be enough. Quite a few casters. I've mixed this crab out, as I say, fairly damp, and. The more damp and the more moist it is, the more feed you can actually get in it. If it was dry, you wouldn't be able to get as many casters in there, but being moist, make a lovely ball, loads of casters in there. Just imagine a carp grabbing hold of that. Just one lump if there's a big enough carp in here to take it. Keep that pole steady. Just watch it all the time, far bank marker, and then just get it close to the water when you drop it in. It doesn't cause any disturbance, and in it goes. There you are, that's our initial feed. And then we can loose feed maggots over the top. We're ready to go. There, look at those, lovely casters. We'll save that, during the day we'll keep topping up with that. See all those casters in there, carp love them. I'm going to start off with double maggot. Maggot usually always brings an instant response. 
So double maggot and loose feeding across, right, right in that shallow water. Let's see how long it takes to get a bite. I've got an idea, there's already plenty of fish activity there. I've got an idea it won't be long before the float's flying off. There, straight away, straight into one first cast. Look at that. That's brilliant. Wonder what it is. Look at that elastic doing its job, huh? Lovely. Just got it, still got the fish under control and shipping back. Oh, it's lovely. It looks like a nice carp, this one. First cast and into a beautiful carp straight away. Bagging on the pole. Lovely. What better method for catching a good weight of fish? Keep it clear of them obstructions. It's fighting this one. They're only small fish, but they really fight. Got to say, double maggot, instant response. It's not a bad fish, this one. It's still takes some, some getting in. Lovely. Oh, first fish of the day, just what we're after. Nice carp, probably only about eight ounce, but maybe slightly larger. Oh, beautiful fish, look at that. Lovely carp. So that was exactly what I thought, instant response. The fish we're after, carp safely in the net. Oh, that was, once again, these fish are going mad. You can hardly drop the bait in before it's gone. Bumping one or two today. I think the fish are just so excited about getting hold of the bait. And the float's flying off parallel with the surface of the water. Always a little bit of feed just to get them going. See fish topping. I'm fishing about probably three or four inches over depth. Something like that. It's very, very hard to set a float at seven inches deep, so I've not got any shot on the bottom, but just fishing a little bit over depth. Apparently that uh, scum on the surface is iron, I'm into another one straight away, is iron hydroxide, which is a, apparently is not harmful to the fish. It's just a, a it's in the soil, and, it, and it, about this time of the year, every year it sort of seeps through the soil, but it, the NRA assure us that it's beneficial to the fish and it doesn't, certainly doesn't seem to be doing any harm. I'm fishing in it and catching fish, catching one every cast now. Another one of those lovely little carp. Just slip the hook. Very easy to slip the hook. I've got a barbless hook on and fairly thick elastic, so there's not a lot of give. Got heavy elastic on to actually try and catch these fish quickly. And sometimes on really small fish, they, you, you can pull out of them. Yeah, it looks terrible, that stuff, but it's uh, the fish are definitely swimming away merrily inside it. We're still tight against that far bank. And every time I'm going out, there are just a few maggots in the catapult and firing them against the far bank. Straight away, the elastic's out. There you are. It's good. Another little carp, this one, I think. The response is instant on these. Little baby carp. Still not the big carp yet, but uh, as the day goes on, I'm sure they'll get bigger. Most liftable, that one. Just slip the net under it. Stop any damage to the fish. Another one of these lovely little carp. Perfect match fish, these. Yeah. As I say, with this, the, the reaction is usually fairly instant. They're taking the bait Virtually as it drops through the water, on the drop it's called. Not off the bottom really, they're just taking it on the drop. And that's the fastest way to catch fish. Really, the most time consuming thing in fishing is waiting for the bite. So if you get a bite on the drop, immediately as the float goes in, then there's no faster way, there's no quicker way to be bagging than when you're getting bites on the drop. 
that makes you catch fish quicker because the bite's immediate, so there's no waiting. If the bite is immediate, then you end up catching more fish. Just about get time to feed. When you feed, see the more activity when you feed. Ever such delicate fishing. The actual movement of the fish under the water has the float going to and fro. Sometimes they look like bites, but they're not. The actual, because it's quite a concentration of fish. It actually looks like there's a bite. There's a fish are flying backwards and forwards after the loose fed maggots. Every time you feed more in, it creates more activity. Oh, that one actually, all of a sudden the elastic shot out and the fish is on. That's brilliant. Look how that elastic works. So it's a big elastic, number, number 10. It's got control on the fish. This is great fishing in this shallow water. It's only a small carp, but look at the fight it puts up. Shift, shipping back. Perfect control over the fish, though. And the elastic's doing all the work. Nice, strong elastic. It's still, it's only about 12 ounce that carp, but it's flying everywhere. Little mirror carp. Beautiful little fish. Yeah, soak it into the net. But these fish really, if you're catching one of these every cast, it soon adds up. Too, you're putting a lot of weight into the net. Look how fat that is. That's a lovely. Pound for pound, carp are one of the best fighters there is in, in fishing. Pound for pound. Barbel are very good as well, but carp are brilliant. Look at, look at that. Didn't let go of it. Perfectly formed fish. Little mirror carp. Oh, that was straight in, it went, look at that. I just laid it on the top of the water and away it went. This is brilliant fishing. Just working back all the time. That's a little rud, that's a little rud. I can swing that one out. But, well, I say little rud, it's still a, a nice size fish, three ounce. You don't mind them in matches. But the beauty of today is it's, it is definitely all action, which is what we're after. Just non-stop, shipping out, feeding, keep working. If you want to catch a bag of fish, if you want to catch a lot of fish, then you, all the time you have to be working and feeding. It's the most important aspect of catching fish is feeding, stimulating the fish, exciting the fish into feeding, particularly carp. They just need a usually a little bit more time than other fish. In fact, normally, this is unusual, normally carp, sometimes you have to feed for, say, two hours, three hours before you get a bite, and then suddenly they switch on like mad. And this one's in again. Smaller fish. But as you can see, tons of action. Oh, that's a tiny carp. This is, this is a tiny one. We're used to catching carp. It's a little common, but it's about three ounces. Perfectly formed. Look at that. Lovely little fish. Greedy though. In again. Well, this, this is incredible fishy. Another decent fish. Be another carp, I should think. Well, that's really pulling the elastic out, this one. Look at it going. This is when you need the extra strength. It's a small carp, but it's still... There's a few of these big carp about, so I think once we get this one in the net, it might be a good idea to change our bait to see if we can... This is still a good fish, but we'll see if these are about, see if we can catch these every cast. Slightly bigger fish, like sort of 10, 12 ounces. Lovely little common, this one.
So we'll put him in the net and then try, I think, time to try a little bit of worm to see if we can catch perhaps a little bit bigger, bigger cousins. Still be happy with those in a match, but match anglers are always looking for bigger fish, bigger fish, better ways, more weight. If you think there's some there in your peg, then go for them. So what I'm going to do now is just sort of half a red worm, little, little red worm, and just chop it in half with my fingers. Still use the same size hook, and it's really wriggling this bit. And just hook it through the broken end. I've broken that. A little bit of red worm, I've broken it, and see it's still wriggling. Try that. I'm sure that'll be irresistible, the big carp. If we catch a small rod on it, we'll go back to maggot. But what I've done is I've cupped in those casters and ground bait, and I'm sure that that will have brought in bigger fish as well. So, drop this piece of worm in. Still carry on loose feeding maggot. Well, there's one straight away taking that. I wonder what this is. It's not a bigger fish, it's a different fish. Might even be a skimmer, I think, this one. Took it on the drop, worm on the drop, how about that? It is. No, is it a skimmer? Surely it can't be a rud taking worm, it is. Look at that, a rud taking a lump of worm. Not really what I was after. I thought they only ate maggots, these things, not big lumps of red worm. Beautiful little rud, though. And in fact, it's left the worm totally intact. That's even better. If you can ship straight back out with the same bait, you don't need to bait out, then of course it's more speed again. Saves on your bait bill as well. So I wonder what will happen this time. Lovely trying all these changes of baits. We've got two or three different ones we can try. Drop the float in. It won't even get to the bottom now. What's... Mm. I seem to have found... Now, this is, this is the fish I thought the last one was. I thought the last one was a skimmer. Now, this is a skimmer. Now, skimmers are known to take worm. So, if you catch a skimmer on worm, then yeah, that's all right, but not usually rud. This is a little skimmer, but it's about four ounces. Lovely little fish. Three or four ounces. Took a lump of worm. Once again, it took it. As it was dropping through the water, it actually took this lump of worm. And the, yeah, it's a, amazing. It's gone again. It's immediate. Immediate. Look at that. Little tiny. Funny, I changed the worm and I thought we were going to catch some bigger fish. That's what you'd naturally think, but I don't know. I'm not so sure. I think the fish have gone smaller. We've had a skimmer, a rud, and the bites are quicker. Everything's sort of alien to what, to what you would think. This is another rud. Skimmer, two rud, a roach. Yeah. Taking a big lump of worm. I wonder why the carp can't get there. Perhaps I'll try a bigger lump of red worm. Let's see if it's... Uh, might make a difference. Still got the alternative of sweet corn. There's lots of other baits you can use. Small pieces of lunch and meat are good. Anything like that too. But I would have thought a small piece of worm today would have been perfect. You can get away sometimes with a slightly bigger hook too with worm, which is an advantage. Because the bigger the hook you can use, then obviously it will balance up that elastic you're using. We're using a 10 elastic. The bigger the hook we can use, the better it is for, for avoiding bumping the fish. And a big pouch full of feed. It's just, it's just lift that up and lower that in. Just let the fish take it. And watch that float. Watch that float fly off at an angle. Oh, that's immediate. It's another. <laughs> I've found a rud bait. I've found a new rud bait, worm. Definitely picking out a better stamp of rud. 
<laughs> seem to love it. Perhaps it's something to do with it. This water has got a, it's very well coloured. It's a nice rod. It might be something to do with the colour of the water. There's a fish. Or perhaps a worm just dropping through the water more slowly. I don't know why. Persevere with it for a bit longer because it may produce a slightly bigger carp eventually. You always get this problem anyway when you're fishing that if there are plenty of small fish present, rudd, roach and that sort of thing, it takes a while of, of feeding to, to sort of stimulate the carp, get them to push all the other smaller fish out of the way. I'm always getting to the situation now where I don't have time to feed. I'm going out and before I can actually lower this bait in the water, it, it's racing off, so I've not got time to feed. So when you get that sort of a problem, then you sometimes have to switch your feeding you feed before you ship out, and I think we're going to have to do that. I'm even just actually keeping my bait above water now, just above the water, and then lowering it, feeding, and then lowering it in, getting those fish excited, lowering the float in. Is this going to be a carp? Is it going to be a big rud? At least it's got to the bottom this time. There it goes. Oh, that was a complete miss. One thing with this, we're fishing in very shallow water. There's a lot of fish rushing about. So what is going to happen is there's going to be line bites. The actual line is going to catch on the fish as they're racing around. And this is a, this is just a, something that happens. You can't avoid it. It's just a matter of, you can't tell the difference between the line bite. Either the float zooms off. But usually if it's a carp, the elastic is out. I wonder what this is. Oh, it's a slightly bigger fish again. No? no, it might just be a small carp, this. I don't think it's a rud. If it is, it's a lovely rud, but it's, I think it's a, a bit of carp. Small carp, I would guess. At least it's our first carp on worm, anyway. That managed to get to the bottom that time. That was quite significant, that the actual bait got to the bottom. Once it got to the bottom, it produced a, a small carp fairly quickly, but it is a small carp. It's not any difference in size, really, to the uh, fish that we were catching on maggot. Look. Seems to be that what happens is that that one, that one really tried to swallow the worm. Really convinced there was no hook there. Very greedy, they've got lots of loose offerings so that they're getting, they're just not aware that anything's happening. Getting overconfident now, which is how you, want to, how you want to get them. If you want to catch carp, you've got to get them overconfident. They're very, very happy munching away. Another bit of worm, very happy munching away and you've just got to get them to sort of, so they've got no fear of being caught. People think fish don't know what's going on, but believe me, they do. They're very, very crafty. And the bigger they get, the craftier they get. Okay. It's just about time to feed and drop this bit of worm in right close to that bank. I can see fish actually moving the stalks and the weeds. <laughs> As I lower it in, the, the float will actually shoot off. There it goes, a little bite there, then a little dib. Just waiting for that float to go now. There it goes, there it is, it's on. Oh, it's a little tiny skimmer. I don't know how that's managed to get in front of those carp because they're usually the greediest fish of all. Little baby skimmer, about three ounces. <laughs> Took a big lump of worm. So, let's try and avoid the skimmers and let's try and avoid the rud and let's try and go back to the carp, which are bigger fish. So we go on to sweet corn, which is, of course, a much larger bait altogether. It's a single grain. I haven't fed any, but it doesn't matter because as long as the fish are there, they'll find it. It's a single grain of sweet corn, and the good thing about sweet corn is if you need to, we, if I do find these fish are taken on sweet corn, 
It's not a problem to go up to a size 14 hook with a single grain of sweet corn. Much, much better then for, for catching a lot of fish. A single grain of sweet corn. There, just, I'm just going to lower it in against those weeds. I bet it races off straight away. That's the problem today is I've not had time to feed. As soon as I've gone to feed, the float's flying away. But you do need to keep feed going in. You've got to keep these feed fish actively feeding, racing around. Well, it hasn't gone this time yet, but I bet it won't be long. So even, even though I've put sweet corn on the hook, I'm still loose feeding maggot. I don't feel that there's, I can flick a few grains in if I want, but I think maggots are the best thing to keep fish there. But try and sort out the bigger fish by putting a bigger piece of bait on. Yeah, we're in now, now what's this? I think it's worked this, yes there's a carp. Not a big carp, but it's definitely a carp, which is what we're after really. We're after catching a big white, and here we really need or is it a carp? It's racing around. Yes, yeah, little carp, little mirror. And we, to catch a big weight, we do need to be catching carp. Only a little carp took a big grain of sweet corn. It's amazing, these fish, what they'll take. Beautiful little mirror carp. Lovely fish. One of my favourite fish, the carp. Oh, I think that was. That was worth doing, we'll try that again. Another grain of sweet corn. As I said, it's not important that you feed it. It doesn't matter, the fish, as long as the fish are there, they'll sort out what's what. In fact, you're probably better off not putting any in because the maggots will keep the small fish out of the way and keep the small fish occupied. And hopefully your grain of sweet corn will catch the larger fish. So it's a way really of eliminating certain types of fish. Lower it in again, nice and close. Please give me time to feed. I don't get much chance here to feed, to actually feed. That was straight away again. Actually stole my sweet corn that time. Quite a soft bait sweet corn, so if a fish does have a go at it, it's, it's unlike maggots which probably stay on the hook, sweet corn will come off if a fish grab hold of it. I'm only selecting a small grain, not, not a particularly big grain. Just slipping the hook through it. Of course, sweet corn's lovely, cheap, clean, easy to use. If you're hungry yourself, you can always eat some. But it is a good bait for carp. Felt a little tug then. As I lowered it in, I felt a little tug as a as a fish tried to take it from the surface. So we're getting, we're catching with sweet corn on the drop now. Waiting for that float to roar off. There it goes. Straight under the bank, yeah, there's another carp. This is working, this, this, this is working definitely because we've had definite response. Just shows you what happens if you can change baits and swap baits around. And then you can start to sort out the fish. It's a little carp, only a small one. Just a, but it's a carp again. Little baby common. Must be hundreds of these fish in here, but for a match angler, these are perfect. No trouble at all. You can really enjoy yourself and catch 20 or 30 pound of these, which Matches here are usually one with, with about 30 pounds. Sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, but it's a reasonably fair match water. I think the sweet corn experiment is working well. It's obviously it's a, just a different bait and, and hopefully those rud 
won't take it. They, they will take it, obviously, because Roach will take it. But uh, let's just hope. Actually, I could... <laughs> that was incredible. While I was feeding then, the pole was almost pulled out of my hand. I just, I didn't see the float go or anything. I just, just felt the rattle on the end of the pole as the carp took. Yeah, that's a, well, this is a bit more of a lively one. It's taking me round. It's probably, probably not a terrifically sized fish, but nice one. Yeah, it's a good fish. This has definitely worked. The sweet corn experiment has definitely worked. Sometimes you don't think of match anglers as using, uh, for using sweet corn, but we do. Quite often, as I say, it is good because you can use, you just use a much bigger hook once you get going, once you get the fish going on. Yes, yeah, it's a slightly larger. But no trouble at all on this heavy elastic. Just get it under control. And in the net. Yeah, that's a bigger fish. Lovely common again. But they're really hard fighting fish. Terrific fun. That's the thing about it. Just perfectly hooked in the lip. That's a beautiful fish. No, no. The mouth is perfectly formed. Lovely colours. Beautiful fish. Well, I'm actually fishing on that far bank. It's about, probably about eight inches deep, perhaps a bit more, a bit less, depends on how tight I get. Now, why I'm fishing there is, particularly in, in, the, in the summer months, carp love warm water. They love to be up in the water, or they love to be right in the fringes. That's where the water's at its warmest, and that's where they like to be. So that's, that's the place to try and catch them. Although, when I've been loose feeding maggots, I've been actually feeding a little bit back away down this shelf as well. So we've got our other rig, which I set up. There's another one on already straight away. We've got our other rig that we set up for fishing a little bit away. And I think, think later on we'll give that a try just to see if there's any more fish, any bigger fish, different type of fish sort of slightly away. Sometimes when it's warm, it can be unproductive to fish the deeper water. I've got quite deep water under my feet and sort of out to the middle. It's something like four, five, six foot deep. But the fish, there'll probably be some skimmer bream there, but carp and that generally will tend to want to hang in the shallow water and up on the shelves or up in the water itself. That can be quite productive. Fishing sort of something like a foot deep in the middle would probably produce some fish, probably produce some carp. The same sort of effect. They're there because the water's warmer. Also, if you look, the actual, where we're fishing, there's actual weeds and reeds and rushes hanging into the water. And of course, insect life is on that. And that's dropping into the water. That's providing food for them, food and cover. And that's the place to catch them. And this is really the best way to catch them, with a pole, tight across. So you can just lower the pole exactly every time. You imagine if you were trying to cast a waggler across there now, you'd have great difficulty in getting it within, say, two inches of the far bank, which is what we can do with a pole. You can just lower it down and wait, and then wait for that to fly off, which it does. Every time, there it goes, we're in again, straight away. Tremendous fun catching these carp across, but I think it's, I've been feeding just short of that far shelf, and I think it's, I think it's time to, to tra perhaps try a slightly heavier rig and come off the shelf, not far, about a metre off the shelf, to see if there's any difference in the fishing. So we get this one in the net. Beautiful little carp, and then we'll try our other rig. It's about a metre off of that shelf, I should think, something like that. One good thing about these barbless hooks, they do come out of the fish easily without damaging their mouths. So we put that rig down, and now we're going just back off the shelf, about a metre, where it's probably something like almost two foot deep. Remember where we've been fishing, probably eight, eight inches. 
and this rig is set for just over two foot. Once again, lying on the bottom about five or six inches. You can use the same bait. Sweet corn seems to be the bait that's been producing mainly carp anyway, which is what we want. A single grain of sweet corn seems to be the best bait today for sorting out the carp. And so we're just coming back about a metre. I've got almost a metre. I've not, I've left the pole actually at the same length, but I've just stuck a metre behind me as a trial. Loads of feed has gone down that shelf and immediately there's action. Ah, good fish, immediately. Immediately it was in, it was under. So those fish are everywhere now. We got them in a feeding frenzy, that's what we want. Well, that's a rud, can you believe that? A rud on the drop on sweet corn. Nice size one though, beautiful condition. At least four ounce fish. But took a whole grain of sweet corn. Repeat that process. Really, I think if it gets to the bottom, then we'll get a carp. If it's taken or if it's intercepted on the drop in this slightly deeper water, probably will be a rud. We're just hoping though that by using sweet corn in deeper water, we'd eliminate those smaller fish altogether, but it doesn't seem to do so. They seem to be as prolific as a carp. It's gone straight away again. I think it's another another rud, isn't it strange? So a difference in depth, what, what a difference in depth has brought us by coming away from the shell, fishing in deeper water, we're now catching rud, reasonably stamped rud. Bigger rud, just in that slightly deeper water. Very light rig. Once again, I'm still not getting through to the carp. That's the problem, I think. These rudder are intercepting the bait well before it can ever touch the bottom. In five or six inches of water, it's got a chance of getting there, but in two foot of water, the bait is actually having a, dr a job dropping through the fish. Still worth experimenting though, because it may get us a big fish. You feel these fish rattling on the tip. <laughs> they won't let it, they won't, just will not let it get through. <laughs> Every cast is a reasonable stamp rud, but immediately the bites, you could probably catch two of these a minute. They're all good, good, goodish stamp fish. But I think to catch carp exclusively, which are the bigger fish anyway, we'll go back across on the far bank, tight to that far bank with sweet corn. That, as the day's gone on, we've proved that that's the best method and the best bait. So away we go. We'll now go across to far bank. Well, we know it's going to be exclusively carp. Beautiful bait, one grain of sweet corn. And just, I'm just going to dunk it in on that far bank. Well, I've seen all those carp moving up and down. I'm sure they won't be able to resist it. It seems in that Right in that really shallow water, the, the rud don't seem to be that much of a problem. We can actually, got a chance of the carp getting at our bait. Lower it in. And wait for it to race off, which it has done straight away. Uh, definitely a, a carp, yeah, small carp though. Is it? 
No, I think it's a, I think it's a quality rad. Probably the biggest rad we've had today. Look at that. Really big rad tight across. In fact, that's a lot bigger than some of the carp we've had. That's a beautiful fish. Beautiful colours. There's one, one that managed to get tight across where we're trying to catch those carp. As the day's gone on, it's got windier, but it's, you know, it's not bad. It's put a good ripple on the water, but what happens is the fish are less scared with the ripple. You usually find that they feed better. Most of the day it's been calm, but now it's, it's certainly getting up. It's, uh, it's quite strong now, in fact. Not that, it's still not that hard to hold the pole, but it's... I'd prefer it anyway. I'd prefer a bit of wind. It doesn't hurt at all. A bit of feed, and that makes a fish have a go. Just miss one, then. The bite, it just the indication is just the, the float flies off at the rate of knots. I missed one. It's one of the rare occasions I've actually missed a bite. Now, quickly steal the sweet corn. Little tiny rig. It's difficult to get back sometimes in this wind as well. I've only got this little shots on here and very, very small. I'm only putting a tiny piece of sweet corn on. So the fish can't steal it without getting it in their mouths. Back over and this is this is this is the best part of the pole. Just lower the sweet corn in. Lower it in tight to the far bank. Oh, it's gone straight away. And that's got on and off, that one. I think if I was fishing exclusively with sweet corn, it's probably, although I'm fishing with an 18 hook, it's a, like a big 18, it's more like a 16. I think you could almost go to a 14 quite easily without any, the amount of bites we're getting today. If you're getting loads of bites, you can always put a bigger hook on. So when you're not getting bites, you go to a smaller hook, but as long as you're getting plenty of bites, you can always try a bigger hook. We haven't done it today, but it's, I don't think, it wouldn't hurt at all. Particularly with a big bait like sweet corn. The bigger and heavier the bait, the more likely you are to get away with using a larger hook. Fish are still very active on that far bank. Lovely, you can just know that it's not going to be long before you get a bite. There it goes. <laughs> actual pole actually pulled round out of my hand while I was trying to feed. I wonder what sort of fish here. This will be a carp. It's a carp racing around. Little baby one, this. It's amazing how these little fish manage to get hold of the bait. Lovely little tiny carp. Let's uh, just swing him out gently. There you are. They're the fish we're after, real weight builders. You can imagine the speed we're catching now. Possibly in a match you could catch something like probably 200 of these fish. Oh, you know, sort of just about one every minute and a half, something like that, perhaps even quicker. And that would, you'd then end up with a really good weight of fish, total weight. Loads of good stamp fish. When I feed now, the surface of the water actually, as the day's gone on, it's getting more and more hectic. Carp sucking, fish. I'm trying to get as close to that far bank as I can. They are. They're less, definitely less wary if you can get it there. Straight away in again. <laughs> Lovely. 
Yeah, elastic doing its job. And it's a fish every cast now. As soon as we go in, as I say, we get near the end of the session now. And every time there's a fish. Catching them at an incredible rate now. We've definitely sorted out the best method for catching these carp today, the quickest method, biggest fish. Incredible the amount of fish here. Just what a day of sort of or five hours of constant feeding. Track lots of different fish into your peg. They are straight in again. <laughs> oh, that one slipped the hook. Lost one or two fish today, but as I said, I think it's because the fish are not particularly large. And they can tear out quite easily. Not particularly large fish, they can tear out of the hook with this with this really strong elastic. It's always a problem getting the elastic and the hook size exactly right. Sometimes you have to have a couple of sessions on a venue. Sort of a little bit of experience will tell you what to do. Lowering as close to that activity as we can. And watch for that float to fly off. More feed. Look at the fish banging on the top as we feed now. Most of those are rud though. They're not all carp. But that's a carp on there now. <laughs> Certainly is all action, this. I think I've got a bit more aggressive as the day's gone on as well. Lively little creatures, aren't they? Flying about everywhere. A little mirror. As I said, we've exactly worked out how to catch these carp now. Which, of course, that's what match anglers have to do. They have to work out exactly the best way to catch the most fish and the biggest fish on the day. And what could be simpler than this? Wind's dropped off again now. It was windy and it's dropped off. It's not it's still blowing br a bit breezy, but it's... Most of the time, all I can do is feel the fish as they pull the elastic out of the pole. <laughs> There's another one straight away. Yeah, that's a carp again. Let's just have a look. I mean, it's... We have been bagging on the pole. Let's just have a look and see what fish we've caught. I'll get this one in. We'll just have a look. I've no idea the amount of fish I've caught because they're all different sizes. But let's just have a look. It's about a four ounce fish, but I just swung that one out. Tiny little common. Let's just have a look and see how many fish we've caught. Been plugging away, loads of fish every cast. And um, we'll have well over 20 pound, I'm sure of that. Remember, get the fish to the front of the net. Don't want to be dragged down. Let's just have a little look and see what we've got. Well, there's loads there. You actually hear them flapping and flopping. Mainly carp. I'm getting them to the front of the net, under the water. Oh, there's a... Well over, probably 25 to 30 pound. There are loads and loads of small carp. Real bagging session. Put them back on. I don't really want to stop. It's great fun fishing. And I don't really want to stop. I think I'll fish on for a little bit longer. <laughs> Tiny 
tiny rig again. It's the pleasure you get out of fishing. Catching fish all day long and I still, I still haven't had enough. Because I know every time I go in, I'm going to catch. And it's fascinating as well, what are you going to catch? How big is it going to be? That's the great fun of it. Lovely. It's just the unknown, I think, with fishing, the unknown. Am I going to catch today? How many am I going to catch? How big are they going to be? And working out also how to catch them. Especially a match angler has to work out the most economical way to catch fish in straight away again. This is a baby one, I'm sure. Oh, it's one of the fish we don't, well, we've had lots of. Here's a little baby rud. No, it isn't. It's a roach. Little roach. Haven't had many of those today. Two or three of those. All sorts. You never know what you're going to catch. Is it going to be a mirror carp? Is it going to be a common? Rud, skimmers. Certainly a really good head of fish in here. Ooh, <laughs> that one snatched a pole out of my hand. This is a good fish, this is a better fish. Look how they fight. Definitely don't want to be caught. fun of carp fishing. So much fight for their size. That's a little common. Perfect fish though, perfectly healthy, beautiful fish. Full of aggression. 